everybody. Today I am in my car and you know, I wanted to sit in my car for this lesson because of the big long trip that uh, the Israelites have had to go on so far. They've gone on such a huge trip, 40 years to get there. So many times, I'm sure you've been with your parents on a car ride and you say, when are we gonna get there? When are we gonna get there? And you keep asking and your parents are like, soon, soon. We hope, you know, just in a little bit or something like that. And this is similar in a lot of ways, this story about uh, the Israelites traveling, they're just going and going and it's taking a long time. So this car reminds me of if I were to take a trip, what I would travel in. And here they are, they're outside of a, a city called Jericho. That's spelled J-E-R-I-C-O. And it's um, got the strong walls around it. And um, Rahab actually rescued the spies there. Um, so it was a, kind of a major city. And they're thinking, oh, we've got to um, take over this city. This is what God has for us. So they're, we're learning today about what happens with that. So to start off, I'm going to do something. I brought a balloon from the scavenger hunt. And I'm going to teach you how to make a snowman out of a Mylar balloon. So let's see. If I were to roll up, step one is to, to squeeze and then roll up and poof out the balloon. And then you can squeeze it again, like lower, and you can roll up and poof it out and then squish it up. So we have roll over, poof it up and squish it up and we do that three times. And then you can pop a carrot and some marshmallows on its own. Does that look like? A snowman in June <laughs> I don't know but I wanted you to see this and so that you could make one next time and I'm giving you instructions on how to make a snowman out of mylar balloon all right I'm gonna put this down now <laughs> God's inst God's instructions are make a whole lot of sense most of the time but sometimes God's instructions don't make a lot of sense. And you know, this is an example of instructions that don't make a lot of sense because the first thing that you need to make a snowman is snow. And I used a balloon. So this would be a Mylar balloon man, not a snowman. So I was actually being super silly when I did that to show that there are sometimes silly instructions out there that you just don't get and that just don't make any sense. But, um, and this story, teaches us that we can always trust God's instructions. So even if they seem silly for us, we can always trust them. Me, Mrs. North, you don't need to always trust my instructions because sometimes they're just flat out silly like this Mylar balloon. That was silly, silly, silly. So that was crazy. So I'm glad that you decided to play in long and you kept watching um, even though I was doing that. And I want you to know that even though um, the Israelites had been wandering. They still trusted God and they were still listening to God, to God, the police, <laughs> the priests, I'm sorry, the priests were listening and they were leading the people and Joshua was leading the people. I'm going to read from the Bible. I'm going to read from Joshua chapter five, verse 13. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for this servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals. The place you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. So this whole idea was deeply um, important for what God was doing with these people. And when something is holy, we just want to make sure it's pure and clean. And he talk, took off his shoes. He didn't even want his shoes to, um, to 
somehow show unholiness in this situation. So I'm going to tell you about Jericho, okay? In chapter 6 of Joshua, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. The Israelites were outside of the gates, so everybody stayed inside. It almost sounds like quarantine, where we all stay inside especially in the beginning of quarantine. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have deli delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men and do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. Remember, the, it's the Ark of the Covenant, which the priests carry and has items from the temple, which um, in the Holy of Holies uh, actually have the presence of God dwelling in those items. So this is very sacred, very holy. And so they, um, they have the trumpets, ram's horns in front of the ark. This is, the, this is like the most powerful weapons here is the presence of God. It's the trumpets. It's the priests, the spiritual leaders. The spiritual leadership is powerful and spiritual leader goes before us. So this is really a nice illustration for us for what's happening with Jericho. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout, Hey! Hey! Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up. Everyone straight in. Not that incredible? <laughs> so people marched. They marched. God gave them this instruction around six times for six days. And then on the seventh day, they marched around seven times. And the priests blew their trumpets. These are powerful messages. They are ta taking their territory. You know, sometimes in prayer and in um, times of discernment, we have to t go on walks and pray for things. And we have to think of what God's territory is. And here, God is saying to have the priests go in front and the trumpets and yell, hey, hey, I'm sorry, I yelled so loud earlier. I'll try not to yell so loud this time. Hey! And we'll see what happened. So verse six. So Joshua sent an and called the priests and said to them, take up the Ark of the Covenant and everything he said. He exactly repeated what he'd been told by the Lord. And then, for so he's emphasizing that they weren't supposed to yell at all or make any yelling noises. Only the presence of God, only the priests were to go forth until the seventh day. So finally, they shouted on the seventh day. And I'm sure everyone thought this was really odd. Probably all the Israelites were like, oh my goodness, this is so different. This is so different. Why aren't we taking over all of this in a more traditional way? You know, why don't we knock on the door? Why don't we say, excuse me, can I have your city or something like that? But no, God wanted his presence to go first and God gave the instructions. So I think that's really, really exciting to think about that we can always trust God's instructions. We can always, just like the Israelites, God told them what to do to walk around the city. So those are military instructions that Joshua was given and it was primarily marching. It's very par powerful. So I, I want to, um, and then I want to also um, just have us reflect about what are we trusting? Do you think this seems strange? Because God gave this city over to them. 
So even though these things aren't things we'd naturally do, and they might seem strange to us, they're still God's instructions. And we find these in the Bible. There's tons of instructions about how to be a good friend, how to make good choices, what God is like, and um, helping us to know God. So how did the walls of Jericho come fall, falling down? It was by the grace and the presence of God as they walked. It fell down by the power of God, not by the power of someone's strong muscles or something. So we can always look at this and we can think about how we can be useful for the kingdom of God as we um, try and, and follow God and we realize that there's a, a wall crushing power just like was there was for Jericho in the power of God. God is active, God is working. If we'll just listen, if we'll just be part of that army, um, that Christian army, um, then we will be all the more effective in our ser service. So, um, so do you believe that we can always trust God's instructions? I sure hope so. God isn't someone that we can see with our eyes, so it's easy to forget that he has wall-crushing power. God's instructions are written in the Bible for us not only to see, but also to know and to understand. We can open our Bibles every day and read what God wants for us. There are children's Bibles, even with pictures, and those are some of the most interesting Bibles, too. So you can go do those, too. There's um, a NIV Children's New Testament. You can email me, and I can get you a Bible if you need one. In fact, reading the word um, God's Word every day was one of God's original instructions to Joshua. So please know that we can always trust God's instructions, and then let's go out into our world and let's have a great week. God bless you all. Actually, let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your great work um, in what you did for the Israelites in Jericho, that they didn't win because they were super powerful. They won because they serve a super powerful God. And we pray that we can always trust your instructions. All right. We love you, Lord. Amen. Enjoy um, doing your crafts and everything else. God bless you all.